Thanks, nice to be here. Of course I do wildlife, and, and my, my thing, of course, is sometimes I like to do humorous pictures of wildlife, I guess. This is a guy just in the, the uh, sheep in the back of the Cabela's Sporting Goods store. They're all stuffed. Uh, it could be a, a cowboy rope and a cat. That'll do it. It could be the cockroach tractor pull at the Indiana State Fair. A girl who looks just like her cow, unfortunately. <laughs> so all these things are, you know, it's wildlife. I'm supposed to talk about wildlife, right? Uh, dogs make good subjects. Uh, blue healer trying to rip your face off. Um, some dogs are a little worse than others, I guess. <laughs> it's wildlife. It's wildlife. Uh, of course, I, I, the, the thing that, that we really relish are the animals that try to, try to attack us and bite us and, and have blood all over their muzzles. They're, they're trying to rip open the door of your Chevy van that won't start in Cactovic, Alaska, or, or you know, the, the, the bear that trees you. Those are, the, those are my boots up the tree, and you notice the tops of my boots are wet. Don't ask why. But these are the types of pictures that make it into the geographic. We have a lot of competition out there. We want this. This is what we want, isn't it? This is what we want, of course, of course. Or this, you're looking at the feet of a photographer who was so desperate to make a picture after three days he took off his shoes and socks. That's about all I get bitten by. I haven't been bitten by anything big, just bugs. Plenty of bugs over the years. So when we go about doing these stories, 22 years, 33 stories, but who's counting for National Geographic? When we're doing a story on koalas and we want to get to conservation, we put the eye candy in there, the sweet stuff. Of course we put the sweet stuff in. Oh, we really want to know about koalas. They're so damn cute. They really are. They really are. <laughs> I have no idea what this dog was doing, but I loved it. I loved it. So this is why we do those sweet pictures, those, those eye candy pictures, is to get people in here so I can tell you a story. That's what I do, is I tell stories. That's all I do. Where are you going to put the koalas north of Brisbane? You're going to put them on the golf course on the ninth fairway? I guess so. That's it. That's what they got left. See, we couldn't just show a whole story of these pictures. That'd be damn depressing. We have to dress it up. We have to put the other pictures around these pictures to talk about the fact that in northern Australia, the koala's got just a handful of years left. That's it, right? That's it. Dog attacks, cars, disease, and development. They develop stuff faster than we do in the U.S. All to get this picture in the magazine. That is one week's worth of dead koalas at one wildlife clinic in Australia. That's a mother and baby that were both killed by a dog. And the, and the nurses that watched them both die put them together with mom's arms around the baby before they put them in the freezer. And they snuck those animals out to me one night so I could get a picture because the hospital didn't want that shown. And this picture, finally, I like to think this anyway, maybe it's just coincidence, two and a half weeks after this picture comes out, the government of Australia finally acknowledges that yes, the northern koalas are in trouble and imperiled and need protection. So that's good. And that's why I work for National Geographic. We can get things done. Not always, not always, but we can get things done. When you go to cover something like the natural gas industry, which they would like to tell you, and I burn lots of natural gas in my house, they would like to tell you that they're very, very clean. Well, sure, when you burn it, it's a little cleaner than coal, for sure, but when you extract it, there are prices to pay. Now, I live in a big old historic house that's very hard to insulate. I burn a lot of natural gas. I want natural gas, but I mean, this is a woman's, this is what comes out of this woman's tap. It's a fizzy, hissy, flammable sludge because the gas industry has broken the aquifer. These are complicated subjects. What could be cleaner than hydropower? Absolutely, unless that's the last Snake River sockeye salmon that comes in to spawn because of this series of dams and overfishing and logging and all these things. Complicated issues. How do we talk to people in an ever-distracted world with no time for anything except what they see on their cell phone at a stoplight? That's the news they're going to get for the day on the way into work. How are we going to tell people about wind? Wind is a very clean source, but holy cow, the turbine fields coming up from South Texas to North Texas to Oklahoma to Kansas to where I live in Nebraska are a thousand turbines each. What are we going to do? Yeah, they don't throw carbon into the air, but don't we need birds and bats? One turbine's take, 32 bats and five birds a year. They eat bugs. Bugs eat our crops. We got to not kill the birds and the bats. That's what I'm telling you. 
And that's very hard to talk about with a public that cares only about the price of the pump and what is on TV. That is all we care about. I thought for sure if, we, if I went down and covered this and National Geographic put it on their cover, the big oil spill, and we saw live coverage of that pipe 24 hours a day spewing that crud on the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico 24 hours a day for months, we knew the damage it was doing. As soon as they capped that pipe, we're drilling there bigger than hell. We're going to drill the ark now, and when a pipe breaks off up there, it is over. It is over. Well, what are we going to do if that doesn't shake us? What's going to rattle our cage? I don't know. So I shoot the sexy stuff, and I keep trying to shoot dramatic things, and I get people involved, and I get them to look, and I get them to care, I guess, through things like this. Whatever it takes. I don't know what to do. I'm out of ideas. I don't know. I shoot the poop of the elephant as well as the elephants. I shoot poop any way I can, whatever it takes. Bathroom humor, absolutely, I'm all for it. Birds come into my plate at lunch. Mongoose pick the warts off of, and the tumors and the ticks off of warthogs in a little cleaning station, a mammalian cleaning station, whatever it takes. Camera traps at mud holes, camera traps on carcasses. Still, they're awful quiet. They're awful quiet. How am I going to compete with Nickelodeon or the National Geographic Channel? How am I going to get people to subscribe to the magazine? We go into the deepest, darkest jungle to find the mountain gorilla. It's epic, and it's so quiet, and it does not affect what people's bosses are telling them at work. It does not affect how many games they can play on the video that night. It does not affect texting it does not affect their real lives. So when we go to people and we show them that Lions are going to be poached and poisoned out of existence in the entire country of Uganda in, let's say, 10, 15 years by guys that have no option but to graze cattle in the park. When the lions kill the cattle, these lions are poisoned by returning to poison carcasses. When we show people these pictures, is it going to move them to do anything differently in a world with almost 8 billion people and a 4% growth rate in Uganda? Is that going to move them to do anything? I don't know. I just don't know. So I go on and I shoot more eye candy, whatever I can, get them into the tent any way I can. I worked the migration story, the great migration story. I shot birds in my own backyard. I thought I'd emulate Audubon, six birds or so from six inches away, studio lit, whatever it takes to get people to stop. But it's not yelling at them, and it's not screaming at them, and it's not moving. I don't know what to do. What can I do? So as I enter into the Second half of my career, I'm trying to think all the time, what can I do? Should I photograph the turtle on the beach or should I be eye to eye? The drill in the bushmeat market before he's barbecued or take a sheet of black velvet with me. I'm trying to do studio portraits now of everything I can on black and white backgrounds. I've done about 2,000 species so far at zoos and aquariums around the world. and and uh, also in the wild, wherever I go, I try to take these backdrops with me. I find flies to be as interesting and as, and as important as polar bears. These black and back white backgrounds make everything equal. They give everything equal amounts of time, everything. I try to do illustrations that show the mouse and the approaching condo and the tortoise and the logging truck and the fact that the owl can't live where there's clear cuts. I try to tell stories with all these and get people to know that, yeah, indeed, these things are worth saving. We are throwing away the ark. So what you're seeing here is a last desperate attempt to save the ark, the ark of creation, I guess. It started with this bird, Martha the passenger pigeon. I, I had a book my mother gave me as a child that taught me that she was once uh, she was a species that numbered in the billions, and now she was down to that one bird, the last one, died in 1914. So now, this is what I do. I travel around, I try to find the most interesting exotic things to get people to look them in the eye and fall in love. They will, the public, the general public, will not save anything unless they know it exists. And some of these things are absolutely amazing and weird, especially when they've just gotten a haircut. And so around I go, and this is what I'll do. I've done this for about seven years. I will keep going. I figure I've got another 4,000 or so, so species to go until I get the entire inventory of what's in the world zoos. I'm especially uh, concerned about frogs. They're dying at unprecedented rates. We are on the edge of a vast extinction spasm right now. 
They are fascinating, amazing, and they really teach us that we should care. This is the last one of this at a, at a lab in Ecuador. The last one of this. The, the last one of, of this. What to do. How to get people to care about an aquatic roly-poly bug, for goodness sakes, whose last habitat is that single bathtub full of hot water, a hot springs in New Mexico. How do we get them to care? I don't know. I'm trying to get people to think that clams have eyes to get them to relate. I mean, clams are in trouble. Whatever it takes. I try over and over again to get people to think about hibernating Arctic ground squirrels and how important these things could be to medical research. They sleep eight months out of the year. They super cool their blood. They're amazing animals. Amazing. So through all this, my hope is to just hold people's attention. That's all I want to do. Hold people's attention long enough to be able to tell them a story, the story of what's going on on the planet. Less and less time than we think. But each one of these things is totally remarkable and worth it. It's very, very hard to get people to sit in a quiet and look at still photographs. I'm cherishing this moment right now. So what's the process like? I'll show you what the process is like. Primates are especially in trouble, by the way. They're hunted easily, and they taste good. This is exactly what the process is like. What do you think? Does that look pretty good? I can just hope. They're pretty strong. I hear they could rip your, rip your uh, arm off and beat, it, beat right. you to death with it, right? Exactly. If you don't bleed to death first, it'll beat you to death with it. But hey, Yeah, pretty much. Now, doesn't this look nice? Doesn't this look nice? Perfect. It's perfect for chimps. How long will that last? 60 seconds? So disgusting. So disgusting. Now, I wanted to mention one last thing. Can we save the species I've shown you today? Absolutely. It is not all gloom and doom. These species were all down to fewer than 20 animals, and they've all rebounded. Are they out of the woods yet? No, but there's at least 300 of each of these now. These have been saved for now. The people in this room know that. They know the power of individual action. 90% of what you've seen today could be saved by any of you if you just cared enough to pay attention to it. That's the great thing. This is such an exciting time to be alive. Truly what goes forward in time in terms of eco ecosystems and biodiversity is up to us. We literally can save the world. And the people in this room absolutely will. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you.